Hey everyone, I'm Paul Cram. My book club, we recently read The Year of Living Biblically, One Man's Humble Quest to Follow the Bible as Literally as Possible. And um, I'm really happy to be able to chat today with the author, A.J. Jacobs. Mm -hmm. But I love the idea of method acting, and I have had people refer to this genre as method writing, which is, uh, I okay. love, yeah, just getting really into a mindset. And I think that happened in the year of living biblically. From the best-selling author of The Know-It-All comes a fascinating and timely exploration of religion in the Bible. Raised in a secular family, but increasingly interested in the relevance of faith in our modern world. A.J. Jacobs decides to dive in headfirst and attempt to obey the Bible as literally as possible for one full year. Um, the book is a really fun read. I'm excited to just kind of dive in and have you all hear what A.J. and I discussed. Um, we, we, we cover a little bit of a gamut of, of topics, uh, diving into some of the work that he has coming up, as well as the year of living biblically. Here we go. Um, the first thing that I wanted to say is I noticed that you no longer have a beard and that long is hair true. and all this stuff. Um, it's not lost on me. I believe this was released in 2008. Is that correct? That sounds right. Yeah. yeah a while something, ago now. A while ago. Um, and so. And I did shave. Yes, I shaved my beard. <laughs> the Bible says you cannot shave the corners of your beard. And I didn't know where the corners were. So. I just let the whole thing grow, but my wife was not a fan, not a fan. So in the end, <laughs> it came off and it remains off. I feel like I'm I'm single, so I just I get the impression that what wives want, they generally tend to maybe get a little bit of. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, uh, it certainly is is one strategy, and it's um, <laughs> one among many. Um, so something that I wanted to ask you, and I'm really curious about is, um, you know, we're, right now it's, it's 2020 and kind of the end of 2021. Since that time, has anything that you did during that year stuck? Like, have, was there any habits or any uh, rituals or things like that that kind of stuck with you and you still continue to do? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I love that question. You know, as I mentioned, a lot I stopped doing. So I, I shaved the beard. Uh, I stopped stoning adulterers. And by the way, when I stoned, I used very small like pebbles. So I didn't actually hurt anyone. But, but all of that, uh, I, I stopped. Um, but there were many takeaways that still affect me today. One of the big, perhaps the biggest, is the whole idea of gratitude, which is huge in the Bible. Uh, saying thanks. And uh, I got very into that. And in fact, it inspired my most recent book, which was all about gratitude. I took my morning cup of coffee and I thanked a thousand people who had anything to do with the making of it. So the farmer or the, uh, the barista or the truck driver, which is aside from the truck driver, the, it's a very biblical thing, I, I think, to, to go over thank people. Uh, so that was just one. I also love. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. I can give you one more if you want, or we can please go do, down. please do. Yeah. Uh, I also became a lot. I, I am still, um, uh, you know, they're one of my spiritual advisors had an interesting way to look at religion, which is that it's, it's the three B's belief, belonging, and behavior. So belief, in uh, God or supernatural and belonging to a community and behavior, uh, either behaving in an ethical manner or, or following the rituals that this community has. So I'm more, I'm like two out of three, I, though I'm still not a believer, mm -hmm. uh, but I, I do think that the community can be amazing. And I belong to a synagogue, which holds some lovely events and the rituals, the behavior I do, uh, I, I do love a good, you know, I'm, as you know, I'm Jewish. Uh, so I, I love a good Seder, uh, with my family and, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, we, we do the more, uh, you know, the, the, the quick version, uh, the, the express. I'm not <laughs> Is this sort the of local. the, you reference in your book, um, I love the turn of phrase and I'm going to probably totally forget it. So you can correct me if you remember it too, but you're, 
your I know, Jewish... I think I know. Oh, oh, I know what you mean. Yes. The, the Italian, the... Uh, I'm olive... Jewish in the same way the Olive Garden is Italian. Yes, thank so you. So not very, no offense to the Olive Garden, but no it's, you know, it's a very watered <laughs> down version. And, uh, and I'm okay with that. I am okay with, uh, with Olive Garden. They have great breadsticks. Yeah, uh, yeah. And yeah, I mean, that was another one of the lessons, I guess, was uh, the cherry picking is okay. Cherry picking has a very bad connotation. You know, you're just cherry picking the parts of religion or the Bible that you like. But listen, if you choose the right cherries, then that's great. Why would you want to, why wouldn't you want to pick the delicious berries and leave the sour <laughs> ones? You know, you don't, I want to pick the ones about compassion and being with family and helping others, but the ones about uh you know the gay people being an abomination or um women not being allowed to talk in church those cherries i am happy to leave on the side <laughs> i i have to agree my book club it's all gay men and we were we were reading this and we were just like hmm 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 <laughs> that's very <laughs> so some of those pieces came up in conversation um something that i really liked in here um, and I'm going to show a picture because it, it's uh, it's a great picture. Um, when this was was written, you and your <laughs> wife were pregnant with twins, that and I thought that true. there was something really interesting with um, the journey of this, and then fatherhood, and and just I, I thought that you kind of you did a really nice job of of weaving that that into what you were what was going on with what you were doing with the Bible. Um, do you think, or, or in that experience, um, like, I feel like a lot of times people find religion when they become a parent, at least a lot of my friends do. Did that happen with you at all in any way, shape or form in influencing, yeah, like even the book? That's a, that's a great question. Well, first of all, the first rule in the Bible that God gives to humans is be fruitful and multiply. That is literally chronologically the first so I was trying to follow that rule by mm -hmm. having kids so I actually had kids during that uh, my twin boys um, and yeah I'd certainly uh, as I say I'm still not a believer but I think the idea of morality and community is really important and uh, and so I was searching for something what should I pass on to my kids uh, there's some interesting thoughts in the Bible that sort of God is a metaphor for uh, the parent. So God treats humans like parents should treat kids. Mm -hmm. And in the Bible, it's a, an interesting mix of, of sort of sternness and compassion or what they call um, mercy and justice. Uh, so he can be tough. You know, that Old Testament guy, you know, he smites people. He is not He's not a softy, but then he can be incredibly forgiving. I, so it's an interesting way to think about parenthood. I, I think my wife would tell you that I am way too much on the, um, the forgiveness side, that I am, <laughs> I am a, I'm softy or a spineless or whatever you want to call it, that I'm too easy. Uh, so maybe I need to get some more smiting going. But uh, but it is an interesting framework for, you know, you got to have both sides. Well, and I, as you're saying that, too, I'm, I'm chuckling with what you're, a little bit of what you're saying, but also I'm remembering your wife there. I belly laughed when I was reading your book because of the fact that your wife sat on like every chair in the house um, because oh, of, of the yes. unclean aspect. So your wife's sense of humor in that was great. And um I could see someone with that doing that personality kind of yeah <laughs> well yeah she is i will tell her she'll be very happy so yeah she definitely and for those who haven't read the book it's the context is yeah the bible says you cannot touch women when they're menstruating but it goes further it says that if a menstruating woman sits in a seat the seat becomes in clean unclean and my wife thought that was kind of sexist and offensive so she sat in every seat in the apartment so i'd have to stand for the year sort of a way to get back at me <laughs> <laughs> and it worked i love it i think it's I, I think it's great i am curious i mean i this is probably more of a question for her but um i i see a theme throughout throughout your work in in the year of living biblically 
Um, and in some of the work that you're talking about, like there's, there's, um, I think I saw a reference to you being sort of a human guinea pig. Mm. Um, <laughs> yeah, I like that phrase. I'm, I'm happy with it. What is your, I, you kind of, I think maybe I'm answering my own question because I'm, <laughs> I'm easy for me then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's just something within that where, um, like these journeys that you're putting yourself through as a writer and things like that. It's a very, um, like I'm an actor, like, have you ever heard of method acting where you literally I have, like, have I've, you ever done that? I am. No, I mean, I, I've, I'm really interested in acting and I've never, you know, I was in a high school play, mm -hmm. but I love the idea of method acting. And I have had people refer to this genre as method writing, which is, oh, I okay. love, yeah, just getting really into a mindset. And I think that happened in the year of living biblically uh, in a big way. So, you know, as I say, I, you know, I was not a believer, but if you act in a way like if you pray to God for seven times a day, then you're, you're eventually going to have some effect on your mind. So at points, I was a believer during this experiment. It was really interesting to see how behavior affects your thoughts. But uh, yeah, I think method, method living, for lack of a better word, <laughs> phrase, is I think there's something to it. I think we should all try to experiment more with our lives. And it doesn't have to be you know, growing the huge beard, but just trying new things or trying not to gossip, that's sort of a method thing to do. Like take a week and see what happens if you don't say anything negative about other people and how that affects you. I can't disagree. I can't disagree. <laughs> um, and I, when you're saying that too, I'm thinking of like all the people, uh, like my friends, my friends, like, and I'm sure you ran into this. I think you mentioned it a little bit, but um that change in behavior is usually very obvious to others that are interacting with you a lot. So I, yeah. Um, I am super curious too, because I think that there's a, there's a certain level of um, um, like, I'm curious, like what, like, like your personality and stuff comes through so much in this. Have you ever taken a Myers-Briggs test from like high school? You know, mm. those personality. Yeah, tests? sure. That is an interesting question. I never have, but you never have. Okay. I am. I'm actually, I've thought about it a lot. I've never taken it, but, but it's, I think, uh, I know that one of the um, categories is extrovert and introvert. Yes, yes. And I think I'm an interesting case in, and I think it's more common than people acknowledge. I think I am extrovert fluid, like gender fluid. Like I can <laughs> yeah. be there. I think I might've been born introverted, but I also believe that there are a lot of benefits to extroversion. So a lot of times I will force myself to be extroverted and go over and introduce myself to people, even though it's awkward and, and feels like slightly painful, because I know that meeting new people and getting new ideas is in the long run going to make me happier. So I feel I've, I've forced myself to be an extrovert and it's in many ways a good thing. I was just going to say, I was like, so you're kind of saying that you're, 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 I'm going to say like you're normal or what you generally are is a little bit more introverted, but I'm looking through this book and I'm like, you're walking around <laughs> New York with a beard down to here and your hair and like the things that you were, do were doing are so much like attention gabbing. Totally, like, I'm like, yeah. So yeah, I'm glad that you say that you're a little bit maybe not a, a complete extrovert. I would have guessed that you were a 100% like this extrovert that's just like, blah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, as I say, yeah. I work at it. Uh, and, and like you said, like you said, yeah, it was a very, that experiment in particular, I looked so strange that it was, uh, it was really inviting attention, which was, was which had his pros and cons, you know, and part of me loved it. I was like, you know, I would turn my head really quickly and I would catch people just staring at me. And it was fascinating because it was like, <laughs> this must be what it's like to be Brad Pitt. You know, people are just staring <laughs> at you all the time. Yes. Uh, yes. But uh, it was also, you know, so there was an awkwardness, but then excitement to it. Uh, 
and yeah, I don't try to attack, attract attention that way anymore, but I do like meeting new people who are different than me and yeah. learning yeah. from them. Which is, which, which shines through, which shines through with you. So yeah, I, I, pre- cool. I appreciate that. Um, I do always love to ask too, like, is there any, uh, like, let's say that's because I, like the people that listen to my podcast, the audience is a largely creatives, actors, directors, writers. If there was somebody that was a writer, like, what would you say to them? Like, if they were like, I want to do what, how did you word it? I want to do method writing. Like, yeah, any you suggestions? Came up with that. I would say, well, I don't know how uh, original or exciting these, these uh, pieces of advice are, but one is just writing every day. Um, mm-hmm. And again, almost forcing yourself. It's, there's a kind of a theme, like even if you don't feel like writing, forcing yourself to write. I spend 15 minutes every morning um, brainstorming. I like try to turn off all electronics and just sit with myself you know and i could have th- things around my desk to help me uh help inspire me like you know whatever magazines or books or or toys or whatever but i do like to make an appointment just to brainstorm and it could be that i'm brainstorming article ideas or book ideas but it could just be sort of free association i just believe that my brain is is like a muscle and the creativity has uh, muscle-like qualities and that the more you use it, the better you become. Which is the, I couldn't have said like a better segue into, I did want to just mention, because I believe you have a book coming out next in April. I do in the spring. I have one coming out. Thank you. And it is called The Puzzler. Right. One man's quest to solve the most baffling puzzles ever from crosswords to jigsaws to the meaning of life. Exactly. Are you a and puzzle fan at all? I, you know, I'm, I think I'm not. I think that I'm, I love board games, but I don't know about like, like my brother does Sudoku. Yeah. And I think that you tackle that in your book, correct? I do have a chapter on Sudoku, but games are basically two person puzzles or three person puzzles. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, and like, and, and as you said, there is a good segue because it is for me, puzzles are just a great way to train yourself to think and problem solve and be creative. And that's what, one of the reasons I love them. Have you always been that way with puzzles? Like, is this has this been a lifelong? I, it has been a lifelong, uh, okay. like nerd interest of mine. So, I, <laughs> you know, as a kid, I was very into <laughs> mazes, uh, and uh, and mostly I'm a word puzzle person because uh, mm. you know I guess that's where my mind is, uh, where the strengths lie. But but I am I have chapters on all sorts of logic and. Uh, and physical puzzles like jigsaw puzzles, which I wasn't that into before, but I ended up going to the World Jigsaw Puzzle Championship and competing as Team <laughs> USA. Uh, and that was a, a blast. Uh, we were terrible. We lost. <laughs> we you lost we yeah. were second to last, but, but we did have a good time. That's awesome. Um, so I have one more question for you, of course, and then a little lightning round of three questions that are kind of fun. But before I do the lightning round questions to kind of wrap everything up, um, is are there any like misconceptions about you and your work that you commonly run across that you wish you could just dispel? Hmm. I don't know. That's a good question. I would say, I mean, you know, you get labeled and uh, different, the books themselves have labels. So memoir, nonfiction, humor. So I do think, I don't love the humor label for two reasons. One, I mean, I do try to make jokes and I try to be entertaining. But first of all, I feel that if you, it's like when you, before you say a joke, you say, oh, I've got the funniest joke ever. And then you tell it and people are like, Nah, it's all right. So it sort of raises expectations. And then the other reason I don't love humor is just, um, you know, I am trying to 
be entertaining, as I said, but I am trying to tackle like the really big questions in life that fascinate me. Right. And so, uh, you know, I'm not trying to just, uh, you know, make jokes. So I guess that would be it, but it doesn't really bother me that much one way or the other. No, that makes sense. That makes sense. Thank you. Um, I'm just, I'm thinking, I'm relating it to me, your answer, AJ. And um, yeah, as an actor, sometimes I'm like, I can, I'm not, don't pigeonhole me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's the yeah. whole point of being an actor. Yeah. Yeah. So are you ready for these lightning round questions? I'm ready. I'll throw them at you. Answer them as quick as you can. All right. Question number one, or there's four questions. I say three. Uh, <laughs> what sport would be the funniest to add a mandatory amount of alcohol to? Oh, that looks good. Well, I don't know if it'll be funny, but gymnastics would be interesting. It'd be, it'd be kind of terrible. <laughs> I like where your head goes. That's great. Um, or, what's the most useful invention of all time? Hmm, I like that question. How about, all right, I'm not going to think. I'm just going to say I mean, <laughs> the obvious or the wheel and the fire, but I can't do that quite as obvious as that. I would say, um, what about... Uh, oh, I know I'm failing. I'm looking. No, you're not. My you're room. good. You're good. Really? <laughs> the wheel of fire actually is pretty good. I wouldn't. I didn't even think of that. <laughs> well, they're pretty good. Uh, how about caps to um, bottles? Because I feel that uh, has changed my life in a good way. Like when I go to bed, I used to have a glass beside my bed, and it spilled like <laughs> half the time. Now I put a little cap on it. Never spill. You put a lid on it. Oh my gosh, that's fun. Yeah. yeah. A lid. Um, yeah. What uh, do you like pineapple on your pizza? I do not, but my nope. son does. And I, so I support him. I'm an ally. Just one or both? One. Oh, uh, no, just the oldest son oh, is the, a big okay. fan of pineapple, <laughs> pineapple. pizza. And, uh, and we actually went to Hawaii on a vacation once and he ordered it. And you could tell they were very annoyed because they don't want to be associated with Hawaiian pizza no, no, in Hawaii. No. <laughs> but, but I support him. That's awesome. Last and final fun question. Uh, what fictional character do you think your friends or wife would say that you are most like? Oh, well, that's interesting. Well, they did make a, a fictional a sitcom out of the year of living biblically. It was not my favorite. Wonderful people who put it on, but just somewhere along the line, CBS dumbed it down. So it's unwatchable. Mm. So don't try that. So I am, but I am sort of like that. Character. You can't say that though, AJ. Now I'm going to be like, hmm. <laughs> it's very hard to find. <laughs> it's very hard. To it came it. out like three years ago. And I think that they have uh you know put it somewhere so i would say yeah that would be uh, <laughs> uh that would be the closest that would be the closest well i really do appreciate you taking the time major to chat with me a little bit about um your book and your writing and what you have coming up um this has been delightful my pleasure and thank you for recommending it to your book club and thank you for having me on your podcast for anyone that's listening that wants to find out more about um AJ and his books and writing. Um, I think the best way to go about it is to go to ajjacobs.com, find out what he's got going on. Um, and yeah, if anybody wants to know anything more about myself, you can go to www.iampaulcram.com. Thanks, everyone.